Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to the Rod Shop. Today we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of rod design. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to go through my latest uh, mad scientist creation with a light flipping rod design. So stick around. Okay, fundamentals of rod design. There's five questions that you absolutely have to ask either yourself or your client. And I'm going to go through them. They're really complicated questions. Is who, what, when, where, why. So if you're my age and got a real education in grade school, then you know what those questions are. If you're younger, then you probably never heard that because education, anyway, I won't get off on that tangent. So who, question number one is who. Who are you building a rod for? And the reason that matters is what is their fishing skill level? You're not going to build a super high-end, lightweight x-ray or elite type blank high modulus for a beginner fisherman they just will not take the abuse you would build on an older im sm uh, rx6 style blank it's got more resin uh a little heavier duty fiber in it uh, they're just more durable so question one figure out who you're building it for and pick a blank accordingly. Doesn't matter about length, action, power. It's about what the material's made out of and just how much abuse or how many mistakes it's going to tolerate. I know I build high end for me. I still make mistakes fighting fish and I break rods. You take that same rod that I build for me and put it in a newbie's hands, it won't last a week. Just saying. All right, so that's question number one. Question number two is what? So what is the target species and what weight of the bait and line are you throwing? That makes a difference when you're picking a blank. If you notice when you're looking at blanks online or even in person, it's going to give you a lure rating and a line rating. The first question I ask a potential client or myself when I'm figuring out what I'm building a rod for is what what bait am I throwing? You know, am I throwing a three quarter ounce chatter bait or am I throwing a weightless Cinco? Makes a difference. That's how you're going to pick your blank to start with. The length again doesn't matter. You can extend a blank, you can shorten a blank. If you have the right action and power that you're looking for in that weight range. So question number two is what? Question number three is more when, but it's more like a geography kind of question. I don't have to worry about ice in my guides. Um, if I was fishing in, you know, the Midwest or up north in the winter, uh, that'd be a problem. Uh, you can't use micro guides or smaller guides or i wouldn't recommend it for somebody who's going to be fishing in the cold cold wind i mean we were 49 we were 39 last saturday and that was cold enough for me you won't find me fishing any colder than that so that was number three number four is where and where is not so much geography as it is are you fishing in open water? Or are you fishing in the Florida snot or the southeastern heavy vegetation? That would determine for me whether I'm going to build on an MB or an SJ style blank. So super generic explanation of the difference between MB and SJ is basically the diameter of the butt. Um, most MB blanks are going to be half inch or above most sj blanks are going to be half inch ish or below you can still have the same power the same action um, again it goes to a question of durability and overall strength the mbs will take more abuse pulling fish out of heavy cover um, they, they just are because of the diet the diameter is larger the math behind the strength works out to where it's a much stronger bunch. You can take an MB705 and an SJ705 and torture them, and the SJ is going to break first every time. It's not 
always a big deal, but it's something worth paying attention to. So where? Open water, heavy vegetation. Makes a difference. And the last question I ask people is, why do you want a custom rod? You know, is it for show? Because I build a lot of rods that are as much for show as they are for performance. Um, and I build, most of my rods are very little bling and all performance. Just, it's, it's about what type of fishing and what type of fisherman you're building a rod for. Now, I have some of mine that I build for performance, but I'll add some bling to. But just understand that why they want a custom rod. If they want a custom rod because it's the first one they've ever had, or if they want a custom rod because they have 10 and they love the way they fish, you just need to get to know your client and the, what their expectations are and, and what they're going to use the rod for. If it's going to be a wall hanger, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a blank. You just spend a lot of time on the bling. If it's going to be a performance rod, I spend more money on blank and, and components and very little time and money on making it look pretty. It's always well done. But as far as special wraps, <clears throat> either like the chevron wrap or the dragon scale or any of these special weave, a lot of time consuming Um you don't need that for performance, but I do it for myself sometimes. Anyway, get to know your clients with these five questions. Who, what, when, where, why. And that's when you start your build. Once you have a firm grip on those five questions. Okay. If you stuck around this long, we're going to do a design. Um, I fished, like I said, Saturday in a tournament. There's a local bragging rights only tournament. There's no money involved. It's a, it's a local club called the Outcast Bass Club. And we had 10 boats at Lake Walking Water, which is a pretty famous lake in central Florida. Not the fishery it used to be, but still has big fish in it. And at the ramp, Saturday morning, was 39 degrees. Uh, about the time we were taking off, a heavy, heavy fog rolls in. And then about an hour after that, a northeast wind picks up. Blows the fog out to bluebird skies, and then, you know, we wind up with 73 degrees and bluebird skies for the rest of the day. Turned out to be a really nice day to be on the water. It was not so much fun for fishing because out of the 10 boats of very experienced teams that we had, I think the total weight caught was 40 pounds. That's roughly four pounds per boat, and my boat had... A big fat zero for some I've been skunked in a while, but I was a little under the weather. I've been sick the last week or so. That's why you haven't seen a lot of videos. And my back's been bothering me even more than normal. And I'm sitting in the back of the boat while I have Josh on the front. And I want to pitch a lightweight plastic in and around vegetation. But Lake Walking Water doesn't have a lot of heavy mats like you'll find in most Central Florida lakes. It was not a punching kind of day, which I've got my punch rods built i love them but it was overkill for what i wanted to do especially with my back so what i was sitting there surviving the end of the day and then on yesterday i thought about it quite a bit and i've come up with a design where i'm going to take you through right now of why i'm going to build a rod this way and exactly i hope how i do my purchasing and my components and I'm gonna to try to do it on camera using some new software I got here so here we go the first thing I decided was and I'm gonna pull up I hope uh, the mud hole website and you'll be able to see it now and here we are at uh, the home screen of mud hole and I'm gonna look at blanks maybe yep there we go I'm gonna build <clears throat> on an Elite X, which I haven't built on their Elite X blanks yet. So I'm going to pick a Elite X blank. I know I, I've already picked this blank out, so I just got to find it. It's a 7.3 medium heavy extra fast. Give me a minute. I'll have to find it. 7.3 medium heavy extra fast. Platinum gray, seven foot, where is it? 
Oh, maybe it was a 7.2 I picked out. Medium heavy. It's a medium extra fast. Medium heavy extra fast. Here we go. It is the... That's a 7. Oh, I knew this was not going to go as well as I had hoped. Medium extra fast. Medium heavy extra fast. Here it goes. It's the NM... NMB863XF-Medium Heavy, $162. We're going to add that to the cart. All right, so that is my my blank. Now, let's look at components for the blank. Um, I know I'm going to put a casting seat on it. I know I like American Tackle primarily for their casting seats. So let's pick by brand. And we'll pull up the American Tackle. I think I want to go with a P-Seat. Uh, where are we at? American Tackle G2P seat, real seat with CCT. There it is. It is $12. So we're going to add that. I know it'll fit. I want a standard hood. I don't want a Unilock hood. And we're going to add that to the cart. Okay. Come on. Here we go. All right. Let's go back to components. Uh, let's look at guides. So we're going to look at guide kits. And I, for, for most rods, I have chosen the LZR sets from Mudhole. They are black stainless, so you're not going to have a rust issue. The insert is a deep pressed um, zirconium, I believe. Let's see. Let's pull up here, CRB. See if we can find the laser light duty, laser light duty spinning, laser light duty casting guide kits. Here we go. This is it. It's $32. That's kind of middle of the road for guide sets. Um, like I said, plenty of rust resistant, plenty of strength, plenty of heat dissipation. Um, I've been using them for over a year now. I have not had one come apart. Um, the box is kind of a gimmick. I don't care about that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice guide at a reasonable price. I'm going to add a set of that to the cart. Now we're going to need a tip top. And I'm going to go with the laser again. Guide tip tops. And we're going to go light duty tip top, the LZT. And I know that rod tip is a five tube because I looked at it before. We can go back to it and look again, but you can tell, it will tell you in the description of the blank that it's a five. So I'm doing a five guide, which that's the size of the LZR running guides. Um, I'm going to use a five 5.0 tip top, which is $3.39. Now, we just need to figure out uh, grips. So let's do, I think I want to do a wind grip. I like the way they stay sticky. Um, they're super lightweight. They're comfortable, especially for flipping when you have less of your hand on the rod when you're flipping. So I'm going to do a wind casting swell in black. I like that swell, fits in the palm of my hand uh, very comfortably. I'm going to choose a black one. I'm going to add that to the cart. We're going to go back and we're going to pick up uh, the fighting butt. We're also going to do a win in black. The 2.5 is my favorite. Just that one. Uh, in black. That should be all of our components. So I've got a butt grip. I've got a rear grip. I've got a tip top. <clears throat> uh, guide kit. P seat. And blank. The only other thing I would add would be a hook keeper. But I like the ALX, and I can't get them from Mudhole. I order them in bulk. Um, I'll put a link in the description for the hook keeper. It's, like, it's about $4 a 
but I get them in the smoke to go with my black guides. Um, or I think I, I've got them in black too. Um, so you're looking at $228 plus tax for a complete rod bill. Obviously, I'll use thread I have here in the shop. I've got miles of it already. I'll probably go with a black. Do some, probably some black uh, with a silver and a smoke uh, marbling on it because I'm most likely going to put a Luz Custom Pro high speed reel on it. I like to have a high speed reel on my flipping and pitching rods because I want that bait back in my hand, headed back out to another target as soon as possible. So that is my rod recipe. You saw me, I hope, how I ordered it. It's a $228 investment. That's what would be the equivalent, in my opinion, of a $450 rod if you went to Bass Pro and bought one similar. Um, but we'll see. Next time we work on this rod, those components will be in, and we'll start building that rod here in the rod shop with you tagging along. So the last thing I want to talk about real quick is the WhatsApp Team FDX chat. That is for members um of this channel which it's five dollars a month to become a member gets you priority email response from me because i get a bunch of them but what it is it's going to be a group where we can ask each other questions show off our work um and just build a community of like-minded rod builders there's a lot of experienced people who have already just shown some interest in it a lot of you newer guys who are just become channel members all you have to do is send me an email to fdxcustomrods at gmail.com and let me know uh, that you want to be a part of that. I will send you a link, an invite link. You can only get to it by invite. It is end-to-end -end encrypted, so none of your information is at risk. Um, and you can't be you know, bombarded with anything from anywhere, from anybody, for any reason. So anyway... That's it for the fundamentals. That's it for the light flipping stick. And that's all I have to say about the WhatsApp chat. So send me an email, join it. Come back looking for this rod build. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. And we're out.